Good evening. You're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Wall Street is in a mess. But how about Main Street? You know, that's where the retail stores are. But how about online Main Street, where the retail stores are, too? How is Main Street and how is online Main Street going to do in this year's economy? And here to discuss that question with us, and other questions, too, about 1-800-Flowers, is the founder of, the chief executive officer of 1-800-Flowers.com. New title. It's called The Big Petunia. Big, the Big Petunia. And here to join us tonight. You don't have here to, here to join us is The Big Petunia of 1-800-Flowers. That sounds so much better. .com, who, as you can tell from that exchange, was once and may still be uh, the most sought after speaker in corporate America. You're still doing a lot of speaking, Jim? Uh, not as much time to do it, but uh, it's a great way to fund our charitable efforts. And most sought after, but for other reasons. I, I have to pay the bills. Maybe they won't seek me out as much. <laughs> well, you got a lot more to think about these days. When you first came on the show, and this is about your 10th, 7th, 8th, I mean, you've been here many times. It started when you were 15 years when old. When I was 15 year old. Mm -hmm. We followed the company when it was making $15 with your little shop on uh, 3rd, 2nd, 1st Avenue, whatever it was in the oh. 70s, up to almost a billion last year, uh -huh. and surely a billion this year if we read the guidance you're giving to Wall Street sure. analysts. And uh, it's been a lot of fun following your uh, career. Uh, but let's, let's start off with um, Main Street, uh, Wall Street. Uh, last year, and, and by the way, I'm going to talk about calendar years. You're on a on a different thing. So when I talk about years, I'm not talking about you particularly. I'm just talking about Count generally okay. the, uh, the industry. Um, last year, the online sales were, to my way of thinking, fantastically high throughout the country. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember all the dark stories you read in the newspapers, retail sales, flat, down, whatever, uh, gloom and doom, we're going to have a recession. But when you check into online sales, they were really fantastic. I think they may have been up as much as 19 percent. Did that surprise you? No, it's not a surprise, uh, Jim, but it's interesting to see how things are changing now, as you say, the relationship between Main Street and the online world. For a long time, online sales for, for companies that had a place-based retail operation were incremental. That's clearly not the case anymore. There are some companies that are just online companies, and there are some companies that are multi-channel. I think the idea of multi-channel, though, has evaporated for our consumers in that if they have a relationship with a branded company, they expect that it's either going to be only online, like a, like a Zappos, a wonderful uh, shoe company uh, started online, it's only an online company. But if they have a relationship with uh, Macy's, they expect that they have a multi-channel relationship. They don't think in those terms anymore about multi-channel. They just think they... They know what Macy's has, they know the brands they carry, they know the value proposition they deliver, and they'd expect sometimes they're going to go into the store, and sometimes it's easier for them to order online or more convenient, or it's a specialized item, easy to find online. So I think uh, the idea that all of those online sales were incremental is now gone, and that uh, the multi-channel retailers uh, that we all are in the Main Street world that you describe have recognized now that they are not incremental sales, and we have to balance our sales and our expense and our capital structures to reflect that customers are going to come to us a variety of different ways every day. Well, are you saying that the uh, sort of the online, uh, online branded goods companies such as your own are going to draw the online person and the Gimbals won't go to Gimbals Online to buy flowers, for example? I, I think Gimbals has been gone for a while. Oh, Gimbals. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was just... <laughs> You What's mean, the name? Macy's? I think they did all right. <laughs> That's why Gimbal's left. <laughs> I, 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 I think that all the things that we had as promise of the Internet age yeah. back in 97, 98, yeah. when you and I f first got to know one another, they've all been realized and more. But I still think we're in the very earliest stages of what the, the Internet experience will be for us. So everything that was promised for us was that 1.0 kind of thinking, faster, convenience, right. all of that stuff. Now the social community influence right. that's evolved in the last several years has had a big, uh, big change in how we interact with the market. And we're seeing so many changes. It seems to me it's coming faster and faster, but it still seems to me that we're at the very earliest stages of how it's going to shape and change our behavior. And commerce is only one part of that. 
Okay, well, I want to get into uh, the social part of uh, the net and relate it to 1 800 Flyers. I know you spent a lot of time thinking about that, you've got a lot of plans in place, but to set the stage for that, I want to put all of the above into some context. Sure. The context you were just putting it in. And that was the amount of sales that we have online. As you said, in 1998, we started talking. You've been on this show several times. I would have thought by now, with all the enthusiasm of that time, that you'd see stores shuttering, that the percentage of sales on the net would be a zillion zillion. But when I look at the percentage of sales on the net, of total sales, it's actually a small number. It's 5%, maybe going to 7%, something like that. Does that number surprise? It's a lot of money, billions and billions and billions. Mm -hmm. It's helped 100 flowers. But does the, the size of that percentage surprise you? No, uh, but it, it's continuing to grow. And that's a very, very big number. I mean, 7% uh, of all retail sales being done online is a huge billions number. And billions. Uh, but I think that'll continue to change. So yes, what, what we've seen is the number of retail locations were over retail. The number of retail stores is declining in most categories. The number uh, is declining. The number is yeah. declining. And that's because if you take 7% out of anything, uh, at the same time you were building more stores, there has to be a, a cross of those, uh, of those lines. And we've already seen that. But I think that the opportunities, if I were selling just a commodity product, that didn't have a good brand name associated with it, and my only outlet was online, I'd be in trouble. Uh, oh, yeah, because the online world uh, is a great leveler of commodities and prices, and someone's always going to sell it a little cheaper. So brands matter more than ever when we didn't think they would maybe uh, uh, 10 years ago. They matter, brands matter more than ever. The experience you provide your customer, the level of service that they've come to expect is, is a, a many-fold greater than it was 10 years ago. People really expect great service uh, great standards, great performance all the time, and I think uh, they've gotten a good shake on that. So the consumer gets a better and better shake all the time. But what we're investing our time in, and as uh, we've chatted recently, how do, we, how do we engage our customers? The good news is I've always been a retailer. But as, you know, if I have 10 salespeople working in a store, uh, they'll each know somebody, and you're going to have turnover. But in an electronic atmosphere, we can actually get more intimate uh, with that's our just, customers. Just, uh, just the concept I want to get to. But I first want to uh, ask ourselves about, how do I say it, intimacy during the recession. Look, what no, you do at home is your own business, John. <laughs> I don't really get involved there. <laughs> One trouble with doing a show is I spend all the time laughing at, you, <laughs> laughing at your jokes. Uh, let's first of all take a look at um, just one quick uh, Q&A. How big do you think the internet sales would get as a percentage? It's say five or seven. Uh, well, if it's five to seven now, I have I have no idea. But clearly, it's going to be on a it's, steady it's increase. It's going to be st steady, steady increase. increase. And don't forget, uh, if you, you have to look at it globally, because so many of these internet companies, including ours, has become a global company, and uh, the internet penetration in other countries uh, is much less than it is uh, in some other places. So the U.S. is ahead of, say, continental Europe in terms of internet penetration. So while it might be seven percent here, it might be one yeah. percent in uh, in uh, mainland Europe. Uh, it's further ahead in the U.K. So you have to look on a global basis. So if it becomes 20% of global yeah. sales, it, it's an incalculable that's number. That's a lot. Well, that's the number I'm getting. That's a lot talking. of flowers. That's a lot of flowers, but you sell more than flowers. You write books, too. Well, you know, I just uh, copy yours and re-edit re them. Well, the, your, your best seller was Wake Up and Buy the Roses, wasn't it? Uh, it's close. Stop and sell the roses. <laughs> Stop, and sell the, <laughs> Stop and sell the roses. Next year, this is the, the calendar year, uh -huh. everyone is thinking right now, this week when your show runs, you know, what's going to happen with the economy. Do you think, generally speaking, Internet sales will go up, retail sales will go up? Uh, unquestionably. Unquestionably. Well, unquestionably. That's, that's, pretty, that, that's pretty unusual, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not smart enough to understand the economic cycles, yeah. but I have friends who are smart, and I chatted with one just yesterday, and, uh, you know, he takes a longer view of things, and he's in the business of, of plotting these uh, these uh, changes in the economic cycles and predicting them and monitoring them. And he said to me, his, his best guess today is that uh, by the summertime, we'll have seen the bottom and we'll see that we're starting to come out of uh, the housing crunch and the, and the credit crunch. These things generally take a year to a year and a half, right. and they occur every seven or eight years. They're fairly predictable. Yeah. Uh, the important thing is to uh, position your expense structure to survive them and to make your bets about what the world looks like when you come out the other side, because it's always a little bit different. So uh, that gave me some reassurance uh, in chatting with him last night about where we are in terms of the right. current economic cycles. 
I think uh, our company, we've been around for 32 years now. We've seen a bunch of these seven or eight year episodes. But this is the first one we more or less had uh, in the online, the big time online era, uh, post But I think, I think the online world is better insulated yeah, that's what from I'm trying to get this at. economic downturn yeah. than is the terrestrial world well, because expenses you, are more manageable. But if you go up, if you've got revenue growth going up, you know, a lot of companies might not have that this year. I mean, that's, no, well, I'm not saying necessarily to, I'm not trying to get a prediction out of you, um, but just noting, my gosh, you're in a business where things are actually growing. The percentage might, I don't know, what sort of percentage you might have a online percentage of increase of 10%, in, in excess of 10% for the whole industry. I mean, uh -huh. that's, that's sort of, that's, that's rather a, That's a lot of growth. Let me ask you uh, sort of a segue into this intimacy point. Uh, <laughs> your customer. Uh, during the recession, do you have any psychological profile of what you expect your customer, which is a woman in large part, I would mm -hmm. thought, what that person does when one is in a um, not exhilarating economic environment, which may be the case for next year? Well, certainly. Do if you go online or do you go offline? We certainly have seen uh, the forecast that uh, 2008 will be a tough uh, economic uh, environment, uh, but even tough isn't so bad. In, in all candor in terms of what we anticipate. So yes, we've been through these cycles before and our experience then is very similar to what we expect our experience to be now. Some people fall out the bottom in terms of they're not, if you're not working, you're not a customer of anybody's. Uh, the second thing is that we're, we're involved in very important calendar events. We're in the business of helping our customers express themselves and connect to the important people in their lives. When things get tougher, psychologically, it's our experience that customers get a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more caring and responsive. So those birthdays, those anniversaries, those new babies, those sympathy occasions that we as florists and with our floral and other related gifts uh, tend to serve, those occasions are still going to be there. So they might not go for the big ticket item, but they might come to our category because we're such a popular priced item. So we tend to lose a little bit at the bottom and get some people to fall in at the top end as well. So we, don't, we trade in a little bit narrower brand, uh, band. The floral industry has been around for a couple of hundred years. It's been a celebratory part of every culture's life uh, since the beginning of time. Neanderthal man was buried in a ritual, a ceremonial ritual that included flowers, anthropologists tell us. So it's, it's been an expressive part of our lives forever. So we're comfortable with how this year looks. We'll, it, with our anticipation of what the economics, are, uh, economics of the year are, will cause us to spend our mo money a little differently and be more aggressive in looking for creative partnerships that help us to leapfrog our competition like we've been able to do. So for example, uh, I know you have a real interest in the emerging technologies and you've been a, a student of Google for a long time. Well, there's a terrific guy. I know guy. how to use it, I know how to use it. There's a terrific guy at Google, he's the president of marketing sales here, his name is Tim Armstrong. And uh, Tim and I uh, uh, found a way for our companies to work together. We've long been a customer since day one of Google, a fan of Google, and now we've entered into a multi-year a uh, multi-million dollar partnership with them that just began now, just beginning now, with some promotions around Valentine's Day and other everyday occasions. Uh, we're involved with Google and its properties. Multimedia though, not just the search engine, but print buying, radio buying, and TV buying. So it's a multimedia kind of application. And we're doing some promotional things. So with the YouTube community, we're doing some promotional things for Valentine's Day. We have some other efforts that'll launch all through the spring and summer. So Google is saying, we want to be your media partner, and we have mobile, we have print, we have radio, we have TV, and we have, of course, all the online world uh, anchored on the search functionality. How can we bring your products and services to our community? So we have this huge Google partnership that we've uh, just announced that just launches now, and we're doing some other innovative things, too. My concern is uh, I have a 10-year-old niece, and uh, I'm looking at her one day, and uh, I'm listening to the conversation around the holidays, and and about her friends, and so I started asking, how does she express herself to her friends? So she put together, uh, at my request, a small little group. We have a focus group of 10 10-year-olds. <laughs> and because- <laughs> Focus group of 10? 10-year-olds. Wow, and they, they work on this all the time. Jim, they're all uh, young ladies. Yeah. So when they come together, they're very serious. They're not fidgety. Right. They come and they come into our office and they do planning sessions. Because my, my job, as your florist, is to help you express yourself and connect. But I don't want to wait until you're 24 or 25 years old that your first likely 
to have a credit card and enough earning power to be a customer of ours for our traditional products. We need to think, well, what, what are the future generations going to be using to express? And what if we capture them and start a relationship with them when they're 10, 12, or 14 years old? So we're spending a lot of time looking, how do we get a product line and how do we re-engineer our capability so we can deliver very inexpensive products to help Dev and Claire, my, my 10 year old uh, like uh, you know, niece, express herself to a girlfriend who just passed a, a big test she was worried about. That, that's very interesting because I suppose one factor in having sales grow from 5 to 20 percent, generally speaking, online is that the, as the 10 year olds are more and more used to the internet world, they're, they're going to be a big part of that. that Jim, the first meeting we have, uh, this young lady, Madison, uh, the granddaughter of one of our uh, uh, great uh, merchandisers is sitting in a meeting and she says, no, I was thinking about what kinds of things my friends and I would like to use. She whips out her cell phone, 10 years old, whips out her cell phone and starts scrolling through some pictures of some products she took some shots of while she was walking through some stores. She to showed me this little survey that she made up herself and sent out to fellow classmates in a several different schools uh, that were in her school system. I mean, it knocks me out. Ten years old, I don't know how to tie my shoes. But you know what you said interesting about that is they went to, ten-year-old went to the stores. The one thing that's interesting to me about your business. Well, shopping's a social experience, well, too. Well, exactly. Let me just expand that a little bit. That, that shopping, I'm, being a man, I don't go for social purposes. But oh, you do so. You oh, call I up go, the guys on Saturday. The Let's yeah. go shopping yeah, today. 15, we'll have lunch. Fifteen guys all go <laughs> shopping. <Yeah. laughs> Women love the social aspects the intimacy, that's, I mean, that's the concept I had in mind. Uh -huh. uh, I suppose they might go and not even buy anything just because they like being out there, they like the whole experience. Now this 10 year old apparently liked it enough at least to go and take pictures of it. Is that what you are um, thinking of as you create a more intimate, uh, more and more intimate uh, environment for people who go to your site on the social networking? I think you what get them there and make it fun I think what we're thinking is that brands are not something abstract and separate from people anymore, that people to feel connected to a brand want to feel like they're a part of the brand. Well, these new technologies allow us to do that. So we can not just pull back the curtain, let them peek behind the curtain, we can rip the curtain off. So when, a, uh, when last Valentine's Day, when a gentleman uh, was complaining on a, on a site for a TV show, so there's a community site for a TV show, he's watching the show, and he complains about us online. He, yeah, he wrote uh, that on February 14th uh, in 2007, there was a big snowstorm came through the Midwest and came up the East Coast. Boston was about to get particularly hit hard by it. So uh, our facility in Boston uh, had, a, had this delivery form scheduled for the morning of the 14th. It was a dozen roses. Uh, we'd emailed the customer and called the customer, left a message, didn't hear back from him. So they took the liberty of delivering that roses on the afternoon of the 13th instead of the 14th with a note to the customer saying these were scheduled for the 14th but we took the liberty of delivering them early because a snowstorm threat for tomorrow, A, we were concerned you wouldn't get to the office or B, that we couldn't get it to you. Please accept uh, our, uh, our uh, th apology for delivering it early. So he goes online and said this company 1-800-Flowers has ruined my life and he's uh, uh, lamenting this and he's clobbering us. 22 people logged on to say you're out of your mind. That's not bad customer service, that's terrific customer service. And if, if that ruins your life, you need a life. And 22 entries, one of them was the, the 23rd, was a gal who works for us in customer service who was also a fan of Lost, the show. And she went on and was about to say something and he just typed in, I surrender. <laughs> but when your, when your uh, customers become your advocates and become your customer service personnel, that's when the whole thing comes together. I want it to be very hard to figure out do you work for us, or are you a customer of ours, or are you both? We have online panels now of people who help us decide what products we're going to sell. Online? Online panels. Pals? Panels. So people who volunteer to be on a special panel to help us look at what public relations things should we do? What promotional activities? The promotional activity we're doing with Google came as a result of several people who are very familiar with Google suggesting we do this. Uh, I sent it on to Tim. Tim said, it's a great idea. Let's get together and talk about this. Well, do you have a website? How, do, how, do you, how would this customer do that? Do, uh, you have a web, do you have a website where customers can get together? How do you build your community in terms? Let's uh, suppose I want to be Well, we have this thing called a website. Uh, I'll give you yeah. the address. It's 1-800-Flowers.com. What? You ought to come there sometimes. <laughs> spend a buck. <laughs> but you don't have to spend no, a buck. No, but I just want to socialize as though <laughs> I'm going to a store. Well, you're such a social animal. I understand <laughs> that. 
But yes, you can do that, and and we invite people to come not just to shop, and that's the change. You, you've hit hit on the area that's a challenge to retailers yeah. like us. How do you get the people are comfortable and want to come and interact with you for reasons beyond just commerce? And that's what we're spending a lot of time and money on. You, you've you've been quoted as saying that uh, in the next eighteen months you're going to completely reorganize and turn the company. I don't want to. But that was six months ago, so we're down 12 to twelve. Months ago. <laughs> And this is what you and this is what you, you you are completely redoing your approach to marketing to well, reflect uh, interestingly enough with the help of our customers because I've engaged a whole subset of our customers and asking them how do we how do we think about interacting with you so we're involved in our customers lives in all those celebratory events in their life birthdays anniversaries holidays uh, new babies all those celebratory events the byproduct of that interaction is we learn a lot about our customers. So the challenge for us now is we create a new company that takes a byproduct and, and makes us expert on all those celebratory events in our lives, which we makes us... a new company? We create a new company called Celebrations.com. And Celebrations.com is there to say, okay, let's take all this interaction with our customers and let's create content. Let's go into the content business where we create knowledge and information. So if a young lady wants to plan a, uh, a bridal shower for a friend who uh, is uh, announced that she's getting married, she can come to Celebrations.com, get ideas. She can interact with experts. She can find venues on where she can have that, either in a home or in a, if she lives on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, perhaps, and she can go and say, where's the good places. She can read what the reviews of those places are. She can get caterer ideas, uh, theme ideas. She can buy the supplies. She can do all of those things. And that interaction then becomes content for future people when we publish a book on the 10 best uh, bridal shower ideas that our customers generated in the last six months. So take the interaction we have with our customers, turn it into a very useful and engaging product that our customers are producing. Is this uh, a take on, uh, uh, I want to say Spacebook, but it's MySpace and Facebook? So you want to merge them and just call it Spacebook? <laughs> That's, I thought I'd do that, but I'd probably get sued. Talk to Rupert about it. He Doug owns Rupert? half of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got sued for something pretty funny, as a matter of fact. You sent a thank you. Never, we never yeah, got no, sued. No, this was pretty funny. I thought you got you got sued for sending a uh, a a, 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 a receipt for flowers. We sent, sent a thank you to note. A, to a thank you note to the wife for flowers sent to the husband's girlfriend. Uh, we didn't send the flowers. He ordered the flowers oh, ordered on his wife's flowers. credit card, <laughs> and we sent a thank you. <laughs> and so he sued us for costing him more than the divorce he was already going through. <laughs> Do you have any suits like that? That's one that the, the judge threw out. And it was one I hoped would go to trial. <laughs> yeah. But uh, going back to uh, Facebook. Spacebook or Facebook? Spacebook, both. <laughs> MySpace and Facebook. Are you on uh, Facebook? We are. No, you. Yes. You are? Sure. Think What's you're up? the only one with a Facebook account? I know, but I, I'm scared to go on because I don't have any friends. You have mm. any friends? Uh, more every day. How many friends do you have on uh, Facebook? I don't know. A couple of hundred, maybe. A couple of hundred? But it's wonderful. Uh, it's It's... We're in the business of helping people connect, yeah. and Facebook is this wonderful tool to help people connect and reconnect. It's wonderful, this network of people. We have about 5,000 people who work at 1-800-Flowers, uh, but I don't know how many tens of thousands have worked there over the 30 years. I'm hearing from so many of them and the different careers they've gone on to or their family situations. It's a wonderfully connective tool. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, what do you do? I mean, just you do it just to keep up with people? I do, just to, just to see what's going on in that world. You know, uh, just to see what what goes on, how the world is changing. So that's my trying to keep my thumb on the pulse of what's happening. Is that I have a Facebook account. Now, when this uh, uh, customer goes online to this new corporation uh, to get ideas for a wedding, so uh -huh. forth and so on, um, does that have a sort of interconnectedness you would have on Facebook within this site, or do you just go click, click, click for ideas? No, or it, can you relate to people? Surely, you want to build the same kind of functionality. You don't want to have the same broadcast capability. You want to have it a little bit more. Uh, walled so that the, they can preserve uh, some uh, privacy there. But uh, yes, it, it, we're, we're trading on the experiences of companies uh, like Google, like Facebook, like MySpace that have taught us all that customers want. Uh, we used to think geographically, and uh, it's not a geographical thought anymore. There's a ge geographical element, but people think around areas of subject of interest. So you can't think of demographics the same way we used to. Those rules are going out the window. And by the way, uh, your world, you know, the, your legal uh, foundation, where you come from, is being thrown out the window now. People 18 years old, 15 years old, 21 years old, 12 years old have a very different concept of privacy 
than you and I would. Well, that's what I, I was trying to get. I was trying to get to that. Well, they don't have any. They don't wait, care. Wait till they go and apply for a job, and all of a sudden that picture of them at that keg party pops up. And, it's a, and, it's and, a different situation. And, and by the way, it does because Google uh, traces all these sites, and you could show up. Absolutely, you show can. up so on, on you Google. Have to, but young people have a very different opinion. They're wondering what we're talking about with our concern about cameras on every corner. They look at us like we're nuts. I don't they, don't, they have a different sensitivity than we have. Why is that? Uh, they grew up in a different time, and they're, maybe they're not doing the things to get caught at like you did. But when you have, uh, <laughs> when you said that uh, when this lady... Changing all the case law around the First <laughs> Amendment, I think, isn't it? Well, I think it's a serious, a serious subject, actually. I mean, uh, you wrote the book on, on the, the book early on case law of the First Amendment. Amendment. Yeah. I think it's a serious subject. What happens to the First Amendment in the digital age yeah. when people don't care about privacy? I mean, all the laws are being rewritten. It's very interesting. Um, let's take that concept and go back to this corporation where the lady goes on with the, uh -huh. uh, to buy the bridal gown or whatever. Not the bridal gown, but buy plan, flowers. Plan a shower. Pl plan a shower. Um, you said that you want her walled off to protect her privacy, but uh, maybe she doesn't care. And if they don't care, that's their option. You have oh, to provide you, those oh, options. Oh, you yeah. do it. Uh, are many people exercising the privacy option? Right now, it's amazing. Uh, we had a, a little uh, Super Bowl party contest. So we have a few hundred people who've sent in videos and uh, planning uh, ideas all around Super Bowl parties. It's amazing the different communities. You know, one of my uh, uh, pet uh, interests uh, has been around people who are shy and loneliness. And what a great killer. Uh, I think loneliness has been, and it's almost, a, I would say, an unspoken about disability shyness. But the internet is changing that. Uh, it, it's, it's creating, some would call it artificial, I would think not. I think it's creating different senses of intimacy. It's allowing different kinds of groups of uh, a common interest to come together. Some of it we'd rather not talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no. some fringe groups that yeah, we'd rather not there. talk about. But, uh, but it is creating an environment where people of like interest or commonalities of interest can come together in a very unique situation. And I wonder what the long-term sociological, uh, psychological uh, implications, both positive and negative, of that will be. Clearly, when we watch uh, MSNBC and we see uh, uh, their uh, Predator show, it scares the bejeebus out of you that there are those number of people out there. You wonder, were they out there before and we just didn't know it? And does the Internet just, uh, just uh, give them a rise? Or does it also, uh, maybe a poor choice of words, but uh, does it, uh, does it uh, help create those kinds of uh, predators? Excuse so me, it's a negative and a positive, and, but, but very interesting implications. We go on and on forever. Well, so I know I have to ask you the question. Will online Main Street retailing have a good year? That's the up year, let's say, in terms of sales. In this coming terrible recession year, we are going to have, some people think, yes or no, Jim McCann. Uh, I'm not going to give you a yes or okay, no. Okay, then. Thanks a lot for I coming by anyway. I would say some will. <laughs> some will. <laughs> some will have a great year. Some will have a great year. Will you? I think we're going to have a terrific year. Uh, oh, because uh, because we're not just a Main Street retailer, we're part of the main psyche of our customer. Thank you for coming by. Thanks for having me. And thank you for coming by. And come by next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I'm James Goodale. Have a good week. Good night.